Baruch Dayan Hamet. We praise the judge of truth. If you have a cell phone or a pager, uh, please turn it off or set it to stun. People don't know you're here, and then it rings. And if you're in my parents' generation, you don't hear it ringing. But everybody else hears it ringing, so... Yes. I hope that they'll, does that, well, yeah, well, did, did they change? Usually my wife tells me, turn it down. So it, it, you can't hear me this way? I'll get closer. Okay. Maybe they'll hear it to, to turn. Gentlemen, can you turn the microphone up in the sanctuary, please? Well, I know how to do that. I just don't want to swallow it. Baruch Dayan, there you go. Baruch Dayan Hamet, we praise the judge of truth. Begin with Psalm 121. Esai Ezri Meim Adonai Oseshamayim Vaaretz. Aliten Lamot Raglecha, Al Yanum Shomrecha. Hine Lo Yanum Velo Yishan Shomer Yisrael. Adonai Shomrecha, Adonai Tzilcha al Yad Yeminecha. Yomam Hashemesh lo Yekeka v'yarech belayla. Adonai Shmarcha mikol ra, Yishmoret nafshecha. Adonai Shmar Tzetecha uvoecha meyata v'ad olam. I lift up mine eyes unto the mountains, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. See the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. He is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike thee by day nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. He will guard your soul. You're going and you're coming. Now and forever. Death has taken our beloved, Gail Mallets. Friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence there is lamentation. In their tears there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For Gail's love that united so many people in life, and which death cannot sever. For her companionship that we shared in a long life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For the gifts of her heart and mind, which brought joy and brought happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all of these and more, we give our thanks to God. It is a time of profound sadness and grief. And so once again, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures from Sefer Tehillim from the Book of Psalms. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Together, let us recite in the English the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now we call forward to eulogize 
Carrie to speak of her dear mother, and then Donnie and Stacy will come forward after. I could say all the regular things about my mom. She was a great friend. She loved fiercely. She instilled what we, that we should always dress from the inside out. You can take that any way you want, um, but I choose to mean more for it to mean more than undergarments, and I choose to make it that she always told us we should be nice humans first. She was strong-willed, and it was rare you could change your mind. We may have butted heads more than once. Those of you that know us know that happened a lot. Um, but it was mostly because we were a lot alike. The thing I've heard most about my mom in the last few days is what a great sense of humor she had. And I tried to put humor to this, but it was difficult because of the topic. I think she'd like the way that it is, though. What I really want to tell you about my mom is something that even she didn't realize until we talked about this several months ago and what was probably one of the best conversations we ever had. And I'm really grateful that we got to have that. My mom's legacy will live on long after we are gone. My brother Don was born in 1963. And you prob as you probably know, he has special needs. Well, the first special education law wasn't even put in place until 1975. Don was 12 by then. My mom didn't wait for a law. My mom didn't wait for much. She pushed and fought to pave the way for Don to have the education that would allow him to reach his full potential. He is as successful as he is today because she fought. When I was in eighth grade, we were reading Flowers for Algernon. The book is about artificial intelligence and a boy who had subintelligence. My mom proceeded to say, I'm sorry, my teacher proceeded to say what I perceived to be in, um, negative things about those with intellectual disabilities. I went home and I cried and I told my mom what happened. She asked me what I was going to do about it. I just looked at her like, what do you mean, what am I going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You're the mom. She gave me some ideas, and I decided to write a note to, and give it to the teacher. Well, the teacher called that night. I vividly remember sitting on her bed, and while she was on that tan, square, push-button phone connected to the wall saying, you are telling the wrong person you need to apologize to Carrie. And she handed me the phone. That was my first experience advocating. She taught Ken and me to be advocates for the underdog. She is the reason that I became a school psychologist. When Don was old enough, it was time for him to move out. A group home was not an option, and living at home without the same social opportunities Ken and I had wasn't an option either. My mom got with other parents and formed a consortium with JFSA to create a whole new concept for independent supported living. She created opportunities for those that came and continued to come after Don. Dad may have helped, but let's be real. It all happened at a time where mom was the heavy lifter when it came to child rearing. My mom changed the world through her tenacity and advocacy in a way that will live on way after we're gone. I would, I would like to say that my mom, that my mom was very strong, loving woman. She, she was, she was my role model. She helped me with my disability. I want family to know, Dad, Carrie, and Kenny, that she was everybody's friend. She, 
she was my my best friend and she's now up in with in heaven the lord is looking down on us that there will be nobody that can replace mom Carrie and Kenny, you've been very supportive of me, and Mom has taught me to be a very strong man and a very, very caring person. Without her, I wouldn't, I couldn't be what I am today. I miss you, Mom. I miss you terribly. things to say. <laughs> um, almost 19 years ago, I walked into Joanne and Andy's home during a snowstorm on Christmas Eve. Since that night, I have been welcomed into the Mallets family, and Gail was a huge part of, of that. She welcomed me into this family with open arms, except she was a little angry when I spilled bread wine on her white tablecloth at Passover. Um, I was mortified, thought she would never forgive me, but she actually made it out to be no big deal. Over the years, our relationship grew, and Gail became not my mother-in-law, but my mom and my friend. I have been very blessed to have the most wonderful in-laws. Gail was not always easy, but she supported Ken and I and Michaela in most of the decisions we have made. For the last eight years, we have lived with Gail and Chuck. It has been a challenge, but it brought Mom and I together. From baking in the kitchen with Michaela, walking the dogs, yelling at game shows, screaming at sports, our house, is, our house has become very quiet without her. Without her singing, her beep bop booping, <laughs> and a little bit of yelling. She was a tough cookie. Even the day before her stroke, she was on her knees cleaning the refrigerator. Leave it to Gail. <laughs> Michaela and Mom had a very special bond. They helped each other. Michaela helped her a lot, especially with her phone and her computer. <laughs> um, she loved all of her grandchildren deeply, always wanting to know what they were doing and being involved as much as possible. As many of you know, Gail and Chuck have had dogs for many years. Of course, I have to bring in the dogs. Zoe, who is our dog, but really mom and dad's too, has shown us over the past few days how things like this can also affect them. Mom loved Kaylee and Zoe with all of her heart. Zoe was very spoiled by her. Every morning, Gail would give her a little turkey sausage. And if she forgot, she would get it later in the afternoon because mom always wanted her to have that. <laughs> Kaylee has been missing out. She has been missing mom a lot. But that was mom and Zoe's bond too. When you say Nana, Zoe looks up and looks around for her. We need to remember that it's hard for them too. For all of us, this has been a very difficult time. But mom went peacefully and she is watching all of us from above. There is a poem that Gail wrote. I, we don't quite know how long ago, but Dad asked me to share it. You never said I'm leaving. You never said goodbye. You were gone before I knew it, and only God knows why. A million times I needed you, a million times I cried. If love alone could have saved you, you never would have died. In life, I loved you dearly, 
In death, I love you still. In my heart, I hold a place that only you can fill. And to all of those words spoken as a prayer, let us say amen. Amen. This afternoon we we gather to eulogize Gail. Her Yiddish name is Gitzel, which means good. It's like Tova in Hebrew. Good. She was bound and determined to improve things and to make them good. She worked hard, as you know, to raise awareness for children with disabilities and pave the way for making improvements in the lives of those kids. And because of her efforts, those kids and adults live in better conditions and participate in quality of life programming. If you take a look at the beginning of the book of Exodus, Sefer Shemot, you'll find biblical reminders of Gail. In the first chapter, you will see women who work with their hands to nourish and sustain others. And it's the same with Gail. She used her hands to nourish and sustain others and to nourish and sustain you. Here are three examples which occurred just before the Hebrews, our ancestors, became slaves in Egypt. First, in the beginning of Exodus, the Pharaoh commanded the Hebrew midwives, Shifra and Pua, in chapter 1, verse 16, when you deliver the Hebrew women, look at the birth stool. If it's a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, let her live. However, Shifra and Pua defied the Pharaoh's edict, and in the first example of civil disobedience in the Bible, They didn't do what the Pharaoh said. And with their hands, they saved those baby boys. Second example, the birth of Moses, his mother, Yocheved, and older sister, Miriam, carried him, nourished him, hid him, and then they set him afloat in that basket in the Nile River. And with their hands, they saved that boy. And the third example the daughter of Pharaoh, who the Midrash gives the name Batya, which means daughter of God, the daughter of Pharaoh, brought that basket in and raised that boy, that child, to be a leader. And those were all tough, determined, creative, stubborn, intelligent, loving women, I'm sure pains in the neck quite often themselves. However, that grit and determination and love is part of the reason why we're here today and for your mom, why you're here today. She was always there for you. She was born here in Cleveland on June 11th, 1938. Her parents of blessed memory were Jean and Millie Rosenbaum, and she is survived by her older sister, Betty Lou, and husband, Bert, and their other relatives and cousins as well. Chuck and Gail met while in college. They met, it was like the end of a fraternity hell week or something, you said. This is uh, 1957, 1958. Then they married March 21st, 1959. Gail was 20. Chuck was 21. The wedding was at the Hawthorne Valley Country Club, and Rabbis Silver and Horwitz officiated. Chuck said, it was the only time I saw Rabbi Silver, Abba Hillel Silver, wear a kippah. And that was because my grandfather was Orthodox, and he was a chazan, too, so he was traditional. In their 63 years of marriage... There have been many, many blessings and difficulties. They took care of each other. They loved one another. They raised a family. They were blessed with three children and three grandchildren. 
We have Ken, Ken and Stacy. We have Don. We have Carrie, Carrie and Dan, and the grandchildren, Michaela, Rebecca, and Matthew. The grandchildren called her Nana. They were her world. And in the last year or so, when she was eating and she would begin coughing, Michaela would ask her, Hey, can I whack you? The children recalled, as Stacy said, you know, when you married into the family, you are 100% in the family. And family was everything to her. They also said she was a terrible driver. They also said she was funny, especially when she got angry. And she yelled at the TV, as you know, it was either game shows or sports. Uh, I've got the tribe. I don't have any Guardians gear. I can't even get it, but it's all right. She, if she was a sports fan, she, you know, she rooted for the Indians. Only 107 years. Yeah, and she was stubborn. And she used a cane, and then she used a walking stick, but nothing kept her down. And when things were too difficult for her to do, she just kept trying, and she would say, she probably said it in a loud voice, I can do it. You know. My parents send their condolences and uh, spoke with Rabbi Fred this morning. And my mother, when she can't get up and do something, she is just like your mom. I can do it. A big voice. She said what she wanted to say. And sometimes was hysterical. I mean, she thought that when you get to a certain age, you should just be able to say what you want to say. And she did. It didn't sometimes matter where she was or who she was talking to and who heard it. She said what she wanted to say. Theirs was a love story that you really, uh, 63 years, it's a lot of ups and downs in any marriage. But can I mean, we should be able to count that high in our generation. In the last few days, as, uh, as Chuck has helped take care of her, the kids said, I mean, it was just beyond words, the love he showed to her. She had a stroke Friday, Arab Shabbat, and she breathed her last on Monday. So, as with everything in life, on the one hand, it's terrible that she had a stroke that was that bad, and it is. And on the other hand, to not have lingered for weeks and months after that is also a blessing. The house is quiet, which is very difficult to get used to. So someone else will have to chime in with some of the language that she used, or maybe the I can do it. And it'll be tough on, you have to help out those dogs, because they're looking. The dogs are looking. So now that she has breathed her last, her soul is at peace. And it's a time of rest and wholeness and peace, just like Shabbat is a time of rest and wholeness and peace. Gail's soul is returning to God and to be with the souls of her dear family, her departed family, and the ancestors of our people. We learn this in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7. The dust returns to the earth as it was. The spirit returns to God who gave it. One day, Judaism teaches that one day all of us will be in this eternal time called Olam Haba. This is a place. Olam Haba is not a place, it's a time. And so your soul will be together with hers in whatever Olam Haba is. You will be together and you will see each other again. Your memories are, are filled to overflowing. It's a you have so many stories to share. And we thank God for this gift of life. Now, for the youngest people in this room, 84 years is a really long time. 
And for those of us that each year get a little older, some of you are older than 84, but still, it's a pretty good run. But we would have hoped for more years, many more years in health. And so it's a sadness. But uh, there's so many things to remember about her and so many things to laugh about as you recall her memory and recall her stories. And laughter is tremendous medicine. We all know that. So try to find good stories to smile about and laugh about. And do these things in her loving memory. If she was able to bake anything particular, anything special, you need to make sure that those recipes continue to be made. The food is a is a helpful way to, to get through difficult times. Not too much food, but food. The taste is good. And the smell. So let us take care of one another because only through the deeds which we perform can the world be compensated for the loss of this good, colorful, decent <clears throat> woman, Gail Mallets. And so we say with tears in our eyes, words from the first chapter of the book of Job. Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mavarach. The Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, say shalom bimromav. Hu yaase shalom aleinu. Ve alcohol Israel, ve imru, imru, amen. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu, ve alcohol Israel, ya se shalom, ya se shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'akol Yisrael May God who causes peace to reign in the high heavens and cause peace to rain down upon us, upon all Israel, and upon the soul of our dearly departed Gail, Marsha, Malitz. And let us say Amen. Please rise for El Malei Rachamim. Into your care we entrust the spirit of our dear Gail Mallets. For you, O God, keep faith with your children in death as in life. Sustain us that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, O God, are with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our life, our hope in eternity. El male rachamim, shochen pamromim, hametzem lucha lechona, tacha karfe hashrina, im kiroshim utohorim, kizoha haraki amazirim, at Nishman Gito Shalachal Orama Baal Harachamim Yastu Rehabaseta Kinafav Le Olamim Bayit Rohor Bits for Hachaim At Nishmata Aronai Hulacharata Vitanu ach b'shalom al mishkava b'nomar Amen.
Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence toward your Gitzel, Gail, Marsha, Mallets. She has answered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in the shadow of your wings and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace and let us say, Amen. And let us remain standing as we recite the Kaddish prayer. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba ba'al ma'adiv rach hirutei v'yamalich ma'achutei v'chayichon v'yamechon v'chayichol beit Yisrael v'agalach v'yizman kari v'yimru amen. Yehe shemei rabba m'vorach re'olamu l'almei al-maya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit naseh V'yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal sh'me d'kudusha b'richu. L'ehla min ko b'rachata v'shirata. Tush b'chata v'nechamata. Dami ran ba'alma v'yimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min sh'maya v'chayim alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. Ose shalom b'imromav. Hu ya'ase shalom alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. Lech kishlach Adonai, go your way, for the Lord has called you. Lech v'adonai ye'imach, go your way, and may the Lord be with you. V'halach lifanecha silkecha, kivod Adonai asfecha. May your righteousness go before you, and may the glory of God receive you. Would everyone here repeat these words after me, speaking them to the mourning family? May God console you with all who mourn in Zion and Jerusalem. Hamakom yinachem etchem betok shavet etzion v'yerushalayim. The family will be meeting immediately after this service at uh, the atrium, atrium number two in the social room. That's 26,300 Village Lane in the social room of Atrium 2, immediately following the service until 8 p.m. tonight, and then tomorrow from 2 to 4 and 6 to 8. And if you wish to make donations in Gail's loving memory, please consider the Jewish Family Service Association or a charity of your choice. And we will recite Kaddish for her at our synagogue, the congregation they were members of, Temple Israel and their Tamid, for the next 30 days, every Friday night at 7.30. And we'll say Kaddish for her this afternoon in the Hebrew school. So the kids get reps in the Kaddish, which is important. Now they'll be praying for Gail. And so this concludes our service here at the funeral home. Books. Thank you, sir. Thank you very
Grazie, arrivederci.